Thank you for tuning in to RTM Nation Online, where we believe that you will receive the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. If you would like to learn more about the ministry, click the link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into the message. Let's jump right into this. Open up your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. In the King James Version, you will find these words. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get what? Understanding. Get understanding. Family, let me tell you, there is no better time than this time of the year right here for us to embrace understanding and wisdom. There's no better time than that. Christmas time carries with it many social traditions. And those traditions vary from home to home, person to person, family to family. From a biblical standpoint, though, in general, the Bible breaks off traditions into two major branches, either good traditions or bad traditions. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. When we're talking about good traditions, the Bible, when thinking of a good tradition, it would say these things. Verse 15, King James Version, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by espessel. epistle. Is that right? Epistle. Espistle. Espistle. <laughs> Sucker and thuckatay. <laughs> epistle. Y'all see it. E P I T. <laughs> Issel. In other words, there are some good things that you learn through traditions that you got to hold on to. Because if you hold on to the good stuff, it'll, it'll help keep you grounded in life. However, there are some bad things too. If you turn to Mark chapter 7, starting in verse 9, King James Version, we're going to read verses 9 and 13. When, we were talking, when we're talking about traditions in the bad sense, listen to what Jesus states about traditions. He said... It says, and he said unto them, full well you reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. Verse 13, making the word of God none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things do ye. So clearly there are some good things that we should keep in our life from a tra traditional standpoint. And there are some things from a traditional standpoint that we should just let go. Socially speaking, family, Christmas time can be quite stressful and unpleasant if you're not careful. If you lose focus, the commercialization of Christmas will run you over. And Christmas, Christmas don't ride a bicycle. Not on a pair of rollerblades. It's an 18-wheeler with a trailer fully loaded. Christmas will run you over if you're not careful. Hey, listen, Christmas is big business. Not big business, big business. And every retailer, and when I say a retailer, I mean like department stores, online businesses, car dealerships. Every single retailer has one primary goal during Christmas, and that is to make as much money as possible. Now, as believers, we carry a very different view of the importance of Christmas. As a matter of fact, for us, just our primary goals are different. They're different than just trying to make money. One of our goals this time of year, and it should be every time of year, but this time in particular, one of our goals is to show the love of God to everybody that we meet. Now, making that goal or achieving that goal is very difficult, family, if we are full of stress and argumentative. Think about it. If we are full of stress, all worried about keeping up with the Joneses, if we're getting stirred up because it's only one left on the shelf and we want it, getting argumentative, how many people do you really think we're going to touch with the love of God? Odds are not many. Not in that kind of emotional state. As a matter of fact, if you're not careful, our Christmas 
can get all twisted in some very subtle ways. If you're not careful, just through the words of your mouth, the very words that you're speaking, you will end up drawing battle lines with the very people that you're trying to reach. <laughs> and battle lines can come through some crazy places, even the words that we use. I'm going to show you three words. Every year, when these words come up, this time of year, battle lines get drawn. <laughs> Those words are Christmas. What we refer to as what? That X Xmas. Uh, Xmas. Almost like an X-Man hero. You know? And what's the other one? Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Now check this out, folks. As believers, the way a person or a bit, depending on the person, the way a business or a person uses those three words during this time of year can either bring up in us good feelings or cause a, a fight response. <laughs> if you would allow me, though, I want to give you some quick tidbits concerning these words that hopefully adds to your repertoire of understanding and wisdom. Because we're not here to draw battleground, battle lines with people. We're supposed to reach the lost, not push them farther away. And we can't get messed up and twisted over word selection. Not saying that it's not important. But let's just look at a couple things really quick. This first word. Next slide, please. What we know is Christmas. If you were to just research that a little bit, you will find it's a combination of two words, Christ and mass. So essentially, the combination of that is some type of event or festival or, or religious gathering that celebrates the birth of Christ. Christmas. Next word. The word that we refer to as Xmas. If you look at that word, the Greek for Christ begins and looks like that thing that's written under there. It has a, yeah, you know if I got a pistol messed up, I ain't going for that one. I might bite my tongue off trying to say that thing. I ain't even listen to the audio. I ain't even care what it sounds like. But it starts with, this is Kai, and that's Ro. So they look like an X and a P. Now, when you look at that, we say Xmas, but the way it's written, you're still supposed to say Christ. So even at the Xmas, it's really Christmas. You're supposed to say it the same way. Now, you can also imagine back when they started doing this, when you're printing materials, the less letters, it saves money. So that's another reason that they started using that. But there was no time that that was meant to X out Christ. It's really Christmas still. Go to the next word. Happy holidays. There is sometimes you can come across a, a well-meaning, good Bible-toting person, and you can say, happy holidays instead of Christmas. They say, it ain't happy holidays, it's Christmas. <laughs> well, doggone it, it ain't happy the way you saying it. <laughs> Show it ain't no happy holiday when you say it like that. <laughs> but if you were to research that term, happy holidays really has its root in people saying happy holy day. Uh, so when you look at all of these three words, giving some understanding, giving some wisdom, right? We like to be educated folks, correct? When you, when you look at these three words, all of a sudden, they don't seem as different as much as they seem similar. In viewing them that way, hopefully for some of us who usually have a little extra go get them when they hear the last two instead of the first one, hopefully it gives you a little bit more reserve to help us continue to reach the loss with our words instead of drawing a battle line. Now, personally, this country boy right here, I like Christmas. I like to see the word Christ. I like to hear the word Christ. I, 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 I just prefer it. But you know what? I'm not going to jump down your throat just because you choose to, to say something different. 
Why? Because I can't reach you with the love of Christ while I got my hands around your throat. I would say this. Let's say this out loud. I will not not allow allow social debates debates and pressures pressures to get my Christmas Christmas all twisted. twisted. We ain't going to have that. Don't let that get your Christmas all twisted and knotted up. Another thing, though, just as important as not allowing your Christmas to get all knotted up and tied up in society, family, we cannot allow life to dampen or crush our Christmas. What do you mean by that, Pastor? When we greet people during this time of year, we don't just walk up to a family member or a stranger and just say, Christmas. <laughs> you don't say that. I'm going to just run over somebody and just say, Christmas. I, I have a lead-in word to it. There's a lead-in word to that. Christmas. It's Mary. So I would say to you, Merry Christmas. The truth is, though, for some, Christmas isn't that merry. For some, the Christmas season is a bit tough. I know. I know from personal experience. I know from a personal witness standpoint, witnessing family and friends and other associates, Christmas isn't very merry for everybody. Sometimes negative life events can happen leading up to the Christmas season that just throws off all happiness. Here's an example. Perhaps a parent loses a job as the holiday approaches. Suddenly that parent wonders, How will Christmas be now? Mom, I got a word for you. The meaning of Christmas never changes. No matter what's going on with you, as unfortunate as it may be, the meaning for Christmas never changes. Dad, I got a word for you. You may not be experience in life that you like you want to experience right now but you know what the meaning for Christmas never changes and it doesn't have to be something that's leading up to Christmas it could be something that happened at a different part of the year but something that just makes your Christmas just not feel the same Christmas may not feel the same because you may be now experiencing Christmas without that special person present. When I say without that special person present, it can be distance. The person you care about can be overseas, maybe in the military. It could be relational separation through divorce, for example. You used to have special moments with a special person and now that person is no longer in your life. It can even be a more permanent separation like through death the death of a loved one. My personal experience with that, I've shared this with you before, it's with my father, but from my mother's standpoint, my father passed in the earlier part of the year. And when he passed, Christmas was no longer the same for her. She said that out of her own mouth to me. And to make the matter worse for her and more emotional, my dad's birthday is in December. So every Christmas, and it's going on approaching 20 years since my father passed, every Christmas, my mother gets a look on her face. I can see a little bit of the joy drained from her actions. Now keep in mind, we, we, we're, we loved and continue to love my mom through that. And I mean, we're not pushy at all. But our message is constant. Mom, you have to find a reason for the season. You have to find a reason in the season to get your joy up. God is there to help you. Mom, we are here to help you. 
But mom, you got to fight through. Because the reason for Christmas, mom, dad present or not, doesn't change. We continue to talk about the reason for Christmas. I don't want anyone to leave here, regardless of your situation, and we empathize with every single situation. We want no one to leave here with a bar humbug attitude. We want you to leave here keeping that merry in the Christmas. Indeed, life happens. No one can ever debate that life happens. Although life happens, though, through it all, that meaning for Christmas family does not change. So what is this meaning of Christmas that we keep talking about? Simply put, Christmas is the day that we celebrate in a big way. It's the season we celebrate in a big way. The day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came and he was birthed into this earth physically. If we wanted to really condense that, we could kind of paraphrase some words out of John 1, verse 14. And we can say this about Christmas. Christmas is the day that the word came and dwell among us in flesh. Say this with me. Beginning today, I'm going to ditch bad traditions concerning this time of year and start good ones. Turn to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, starting in verse 6 with the, in the Message Bible. When we're talking about bad traditions, I think this is a good passage for us to kind of stir up the atmosphere of what a bad tradition is. Now here Jesus is talking about, you know, religious traditions versus the commands of God, but he sets it up so beautifully. We got, it's a perfect thing to use. It reads like this. Jesus answered, Isaiah was right about frauds like you. Hit the bullseye, in fact. These people make a big show of saying the right thing, but their heart isn't in it. A lot of times people make a big show about Christmas, but their heart's not really in it. They don't really know the reason why they're doing what they're doing. they just caught up. They act like they are worshiping me, but don't mean it. But they don't mean it. They just use me as a cover for teaching whatever suits their fancy. A lot of times people use Christmas as a cover just to get your money. I don't never see anything going on from a Christian standpoint or whatever y'all doing over there. But Christmas time, when you can get my dollars, you, 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 you doggone it, Christmas tree down. You're just doing it for a particular purpose to fit your fancy because you know it'll pull me in and get my funds. But it's not really in your heart to serve my God. Ditching God's command and taking up the latest fads. He went on, well, good for you. You get rid of God's commands so you won't be inconvenienced in following religious fashions. Getting caught up in the fads and the fashions of this season, that's one of the traditions we want to get rid of. We should not support Christmas in a big showy way without having the right heart concerning its purpose. We shouldn't do that. Now, is gift giving a bad thing? Heavens, no. No, get your gifts. I'm, I, am, I am not saying do not get gifts. Am I saying that? No. Thank you. Everybody looking at me. What are you going? No, I'm not saying get your gifts. You know, I would never take away something that brings you joy in this season, something wholesome as being a giver. We'd never take that away from you. We'd never say that you shouldn't do that. Of course, go out and get your gifts. Here's what I do want, though. While you're out buying gifts and blessing others, here is what I want us to stop doing. Say this with me. I want, I want to, remove to remove myself from the pressures, from the pressures 
to get overextended, get overextended financially, financially and, and being shallow, being shallow about, valuing about valuing love, love by, the by the size or worth, or worth of, material of material gifts. That is what we want to get away from. Family, we want to get away from getting yourself financially extended during this time of day, the time of year. And we want to get away from attaching the value of the way somebody care for you by what they give you. We want to get rid of any tradition that lead us down that road. Now, what about a good tradition? Let's talk about that real quick. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. We've already read it in the King James Version. You know, a good tradition is one that keeps the meaning and the spirit of Christmas true. The one we've read already for that is, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. If we were to take a quick look at that same chapter, that same book, same chapter in the Message Bible, verses 14 through, 13, 14 through 17, the Message Bible points out the essence of a good tradition for this season. Let's walk through that together really quick. Here's what you'll find. I'm actually going to start in verse 13. Meanwhile, you've got our we've got our hands full, continually thanking God for you, our good friends, so loved by God. God picked you out as as his from the very start. Think of it included in God's original plan of salvation by the bond of faith in the living truth. This is the life of the spirit. He invited you to through the mess through the message we delivered in which you get in on the glory of our master, Jesus Christ. So, friends, take a firm stand, feet on the ground, and head high. Keep a tight grip on what you're taught, whether in personal conversation or by letter. May Jesus himself and God our Father, who reached out in love, surprise you with gifts of unending help and confidence and put a fresh heart in you, invigorate your work, enliven your speech. Back to verse 13. A quick run through. What would be a good tradition? Just picking out a couple of words. Number one, we want to thank God during this year for good friends. That's one of your traditions during this time of year, to just thank God for good friends. Amen. Also, thank God because God picked you. Christmas is a moment to celebrate that God picked you. We thank God also for salvation during this time of year. Go to verse 14. We thank God that he invited us into the life of the spirit. Part of the tradition that we want to pass down. Also, we thank God for the whole reason. What? Jesus Christ. Verse 15. We always want to make sure that whatever tradition we pass down is something that we want our children to keep a grip on for the rest of their life. So we want to teach them wholesome things of what God says life should be like. Verse 16. We celebrate the fact that God reached out to us in love. Verse 16. Okay. Verse 17, we have here also a fresh heart, invigorate your work, and enliven your speech. Those, verse, those words there I have for everyone who has experienced something in life that has taken the joy of Christmas away. Our prayer is that God gives you a fresh heart. That he invigorates you and lets you know what the true meaning of this season is. And that he changes your speech to speak joyous things around this time, to be able to let people know 
what the true meaning of this season is all about. Good traditions. We're wrapping up. So let, let the children know they can get ready to come in. Good traditions are very powerful tools if used correctly. The things that we pass down to our children, they will pass down to their children. And if done correctly, generation after generation will truly understand and know what this season is all about. We will be able to establish a good tradition. We will be able to make Christmas a good tradition. Here is the harsh reality, though, about a tradition. A tradition may start with a one-time event, but a tradition never becomes a tradition if it's only done once or if it's done inconsistent. We cannot establish a tradition with our families if we don't put the work behind making the tradition stick. I love how author Nathaniel Hawthorne put it. Listen to this and tell me if this is not insightful. He said, nobody can make a tradition. It takes a century to make it. Think about that. Nobody can just up and make a tradition in a moment. A tradition takes time to become a tradition. Someone who made sure that consistently the same message and the same event took place. If we want to know the true purpose of Christmas and we want to make sure that it continues to thrive out loud, we have to make sure that the Christmas tradition remains true. That it's focused on Jesus Christ and the fact that God loved us enough to institute a plan to save us when we couldn't save ourselves. If it's going to be a tradition, though, it must be consistent and it must be taught beginning in our very own homes and in intimate family settings like these. With all that being said, family, that's a perfect introduction to the presentation that our young people are going to provide to us. What you're about to experience is a tradition setting moment. It is a tradition setting moment and it is a moment that if done properly will set the stage for how our young people feel about Christmas. So we shall show them the love and support due to the effort they put forth. We will not disappoint them. It'll never be written on the tables of their heart that they displayed what they felt was the love of God before the people that were supposed to love them. And they didn't receive every drop of love that we had to offer. They're our babies. Just like the word says, they're in this world, but they only become of the world if we turn away from them. And that's not what we do. I don't even know what they're going to present to you. <laughs> they said, Pastor, I want to surprise you, so we're going we gonna to be surprised together. <laughs> but I do know one thing. I have a great anticipation. A great anticipation. If you don't mind, let's pray. God, I thank you that your spirit is in this place. I ask that you rest on the tables of the heart of every youth that presents today. They've put their time, they've put their effort, they've put They've put their talent to display 
what this season means to them. <laughs> We're going to accept them with open arms. We are highly anticipating what they will show. We pray that today's message was a blessing to you. If you would like to help us further expand the vision, simply text the word GIVERTM to the number 41444 or visit us online at www.revealingtruth.org. Now remember, Jesus loves you.